we know how to do Lewis structures. We know how to do formal charge analysis. We know how to do resonance. Now let's use our Lewis structures to evaluate something that's called electron geometry. And electron geometry is, uh, was covered in the lecture outline. Uh, and <laughs> so I haven't thought about this. So if that's not true, let me know. But um, it should have been. And, but the way that electron geometry works, and in fact, we have electron geometry, we have hybridization, we have bond angles, and we have pi bonds and sigma bonds. And so all of these things require that we know the Lewis structure. And once we do that, we're going to say that we're going to count up the number of electron groups around the central atom. And from the number of electron groups, you can tell the electron geometry, the hybridization, the bond angle, and then at the end we'll have to talk about uh, what a sigma bond and a pi bond is. But from the lecture outlines, if there are two electron groups, and something with two electron groups would be carbon dioxide. So me here, I'll do an example over here. So carbon dioxide is if you look at the central atom, there's a one double bond, which is one electron group, a second double bond, which is a second electron group, and that's why we get two electron groups around the central atom. The electron geometry is linear. The hybridization is what's called sp hybridization. And what you will notice is that the number of electron groups and the number of hybridized orbitals are always equal to each other. So since this is one of the s orbitals and one of the p orbitals, that's two hybridized orbitals, electron groups there. The bond angle is 180 degrees, and the example is carbon dioxide. So then for three electron groups, we are going to have a trigonal planar. We will have three hybridized orbitals, which will be sp2. So that means two of the p's and one of the s's. The bond angle will be 120 degrees. And a good example of this is actually the nitrate. that we just did. Because if you look around the central atom, there are three electron groups. One, two, three. And from the lecture outline, an electron group is some form of electrons grouped together or not. So a single bond is a group, a double bond is a group, a pair of non-bonding electrons is a group, and a triple bond is one group. So, and we'll keep going because what you should do, I mean, sort of the, the best thing I can tell you is memorize these combinations because you're gonna use them a lot. Uh, four is the tetrahedral shape. There are sp3 hybridization, and that's four orbitals hybridized. The bond angle is 109.5 degrees, and CH4 is a great example of that. And we'll talk more about that. There are actually five and six electron groups that we cover. Five is gonna be trigonal bipyramidal. 
by pyramidal. There will be five orbitals hybridized. Since we ran out of S's and P's, we will add one of the D's. And you'll remember that if you have an expanded octet, we said that the electrons the beyond eight go into the D orbitals. Here's evidence of that. The bond angles are 90 degrees and 120 degrees for this one. And a good example of this would be IF3. Finally, six electron groups would be octahedral, SP3D2, and only 90 degrees, with uh, SF6 being a good example of this. So this little table here will be very helpful for you as we go through these problems. Are there any questions about this table before we tackle some of the problems? All right, then tackle away we shall. So the first one, and again, there will be four questions in this, is uh, what is the electron geometry around the central atom of pH3? Of course, it says as a hint to solve this problem, it is probably helpful to draw the Lewis structure. Let's go ahead and do that. For pH3, we have five, plus one times three equals eight electrons. When we put these in, we realize that hydrogen cannot be the central atom, so it must be phosphorus. We put phosphorus in, we attach the hydrogens with single bonds, then we have two more electrons so we place those on the central atom. Were we to do a formal charge analysis, uh, first off, we don't usually do it for hydrogen, but if we did, we would see that all of the hydrogens have zero formal charges. And phosphorus, since it's in group five or 15, it has five valence electrons, minus or take away the three bonds and two unshared electrons, so five minus five is zero. This has no formal charge on any of the atoms. And, okay, so now, again, the process is always the same. Draw a best Lewis structure, then try and answer the question. The question this time says, what is the electron geometry? If you've got your table or if you've got it memorized, we count up one, two, three, four electron groups. Four electron groups is tetrahedral. Good, it's an answer. It is tetrahedral. And if you were asked to draw tetrahedral, what you would draw because tetrahedral is a non planar molecule. So it is not in a plane, it is not flat. What you could draw is what are called, uh, we'll put a pair of electrons on top and then put each of the hydrogens on the bottom. And what I'm looking for when you draw the shape of this, should you be asked, is that for tetrahedral, three of the four angle down uh, and yes I can Cheryl uh, three of the four angle down there is an out wedge this is what's called an out wedge this which is a series of increasingly smaller dashed lines is what's called a back wedge. And they are meant to indicate that this hydrogen is coming out of the page at you, and this hydrogen is going back behind the page. Um, 
And that will become important when we talk about next week when we talk about uh, dipoles and polar versus nonpolar. Now, uh, let me put that page back up for a minute. There it is. Like I said, very helpful to know these. Very helpful to memorize each of these together. Good? All right. Hmm. Any questions about pH 3? Sorry, please, can you put the other page back up? Yes, I can. I just want to see the last part. Yeah. Yeah, that's all. I'm sure. Good. All right. Um, oh, so by the way, if we have four electron groups, <laughs> we could answer this question, and you may get it, but the four electron groups, the um, if the question was hybridization, we would say it's sp3. If the question was bond angle, and let's go ahead and answer this question because you may see it. It says 109.5 here, but let's talk about pH 3. pH 3, so any time there's a pair of electrons, the pair of electrons, so let me see. So we have tetrahedral, we have sp3, that's another answer uh, for hybridization. Now let's talk about bond angle. Any time there's a pair of electrons, the pair of electrons pushes the other atoms slightly farther away, which means that the bond angle, which is the angle between hydrogen, phosphorus, and either of these other hydrogens, will be less than 109.5 degrees. And that, so the less than symbol comes in whenever there's a pair of electrons on the central atom or two pairs of electrons, or three pairs of electrons, whatever it is. And that's why we get less than the perfect angle right here. If it was CH4, CH4, does not have a pair of electrons. It has four things, four atoms, this would be 109.5 degrees exactly. Any questions about that? Please, can you repeat it one more time? Yes. Okay. So this sheet that I just showed is the bond angle associated with each of these. Um, and uh, however, or I'll say this, however, if there's a pair of electrons or more pairs, than, more than one, but at least one pair of electrons, it will be less than this perfect bond angle right here. So for CH4, which has all atoms and no pairs of electrons, it's perfectly 109.5. For pH3, which when we draw its Lewis structure has one pair of electrons, your answer must be less than 109.5. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Let's do the other one now. For nitrate, we've already drawn its best Lewis structure on a previous problem. We've seen that it looks like this, except we need to put in all our dots. Oop, those were kind of far away, but there they go. That is the best Lewis structure for the nitrate ion. For the nitrate ion, we look around the central atom. We see one, two, three. And uh, three electron groups means trigonal planar. Were we to continue, we would say that it's sp2 hybridization because three electron groups means three hybridized orbitals. And for bond angle, since all of these are atoms, we would say it's a perfect 120 degrees. Any questions about that? Yeah. 